So there are issues today actually um, uh, Dr. Subhendu Roy is uh, today's uh, so-called uh, resource person who talk on um, this multi-scale modeling and uh, simulation techniques. He has three classes, so, but uh, this is uh, a bit uh, unnatural. Actually, he has gone to a, uh, basically, a, a, we have a small auditorium. So there he was trying and the laptop got hanged. So, but uh, it will be fixed in uh, in every possibility. So, so I just uh, tell you that uh, Shubhendu is uh, actually an integrated PhD uh, student of Indian Institute of Science, where right from he did his PhD. He is very young. So he has joined us in uh, the year two zero one nine, and then after he has joined uh, Saha Institute. So he is uh, he is only here for about two years, and you know what has been happening past two years. So so he is uh, he is uh, just beginning, okay. But he he that's what he he did his PhD from Indian Institute of Science, uh, but he has an illustrious postdoctoral career, one from. Uh, I think uh, University of Stuttgart, where he stayed for about three years. And then he was in University of Southern California with Ori Warshall. A Ori Warshall is a, a Nobel laureate in uh, chemistry in the year 2013. And he is actually the pioneer of what these days people call as, uh, you know, hybrid systems, so hybrid simulations. QMMD. So this is a quantum mechanical and uh, molecular dynamic dynamical simulations. So basically, these are very obviously very elaborate, very uh, uh, bit of complex, but uh, very accurate. That's what they claim. So he would actually go through uh, uh, briefly. That is what uh, we we kind of discussed that he would go through all kinds of uh, simulation techniques, so be it uh, molecular dynamics, molecular mechanics, and then this uh, very popular these days for macromolecular systems, cross, uh, coarse grain uh, simulations. And then he would get into his area of this uh, QMMD, and uh, his research interest is basically on enzyme active sites. So, you know, if you want to get into the uh, so-called mechanism of enzyme uh, enzyme activity and, you know, how does it work? So then uh, I think his, this uh, QMMD kind of hybrid uh, simulation techniques comes in real um, so-called uh, handy. So he would do that. He has three classes uh, back to back. Uh, if uh, today uh, he is uh, failing, uh, facing some hiccups, I will see to that that this doesn't happen in next class and next to next class. So what's possible? He comes to my office and then he takes uh, class from here, where from I am speaking. Now, uh, I would just uh, take advantage of this uh, unfortunate thing where the class couldn't be started. So, I tell you a few things now. One is, uh, you know that you have to sit for uh, actually two exams. One is a final exam, which will be a bit of a serious kind of, a, a very obvious, you know, there will be some uh, 40 odd classes so naturally, there has to be a, a serious evaluation, but that is that will come absolutely at the end. But in between, so I would say between, so in uh, in October uh, end, uh, typically, typically October end, um, I don't uh, remember the date now, but it is at the end of October, we have an insane uh, test, which is basically all MCQ and uh, you know it will be very easy 
uh, for all of you who are who have registered and who are kind of taking it seriously. So I only request you to uh, get back to me because see all these presentations are there and uh, you know you are not uh, I mean not many are uh, you know you are all very smart and uh, you know uh, senior in terms of studentship you know. So uh, you know how to manage. So in those presentations also you will find a lot of references. I think some, some of your teachers would even cite books. So you can get them. In case you have any problem, first you can directly contact through email the resource person who taught you. And in case you have any issues, I am free. So please send me. And I just tell you, uh, I know my Saha mail is there anyway. But I just tell you one thing, which is uh, there is, a, I think you could even write it down, which is Obhijit, A B H I J I T, 1960. So Obhijit, A B H I J I T, 1960 at the rate gmail.com. So you can post me your queries that you know you need uh, this assistance you need that assistance i would try my level best uh, to get back to you and you know in case you need some uh, some so called uh, some study material because i i heard from uh, professor partho shaha that probably some of you have already inquired so I'm just telling you that please feel free. You can, uh, if if you have any any of uh, any any problem, you can get back to me. I would get hold of that particular resource person, get some study material for you. So whosoever will be interested, please remember that this is an overview kind of a course. So naturally, you know, uh, not not many. There are there are few which is about three classes, uh, three classes is probably the longest about one topic. So three, three classes, there will be some people could go in some detail, but for one class or two classes. Uh, so, uh, okay, so there is also a, uh, an announcement from HBNI and that is from uh, this week itself or uh, surely from next week, the study materials will be uploaded. So you won't have any problem. So you will get those study materials from uh, from this site itself. So this is also another news. But anyway, this is study material should not be a problem. You will get it here itself. You can get it from the resource person, from the teacher and very obviously, what you could do is you could also uh, get it from uh, the uh, person, uh, you know, who is taking uh, the class. Uh, myself and Bhattu Shah can be always contact. Okay. So, this is what uh, I wanted to tell you. And now, I think uh, I have to go back and I would request you to you know, stay tuned for at least uh, give me five minutes so that I see that if I could do the job uh, now itself by bringing uh, the teacher in my office so that he can take the class from here because he must be facing some problems somewhere else. I'll just uh, get a detail and uh, come back to you. Okay, please, please hold your breath for about five minutes.
Uh, we did the, uh, just uh, trying this one, sharing the slide. If now, uh, yeah, I think, it, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So, oh, I can see the slide. Oh, fantastic. Okay, okay. please go ahead. Can, please. can you can you hear me also? Uh, uh, I can hear you from telephones. See if I can. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I can, I can. So please, please shoot, please shoot and. Go ahead. I have already told them about uh, uh, Vendu Roy. So, uh, so please, please go ahead and uh, you know just take your class. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry, I am extremely sorry for this delay, and thank you, Professor Chakravarti, for your kind introduction. So today I'm going to uh, talk about, so let me just, yes. So I hope everyone can see the slide. Today I'm going to talk about, uh, it's a course basically. So I'm going to teach you that multi-scale modeling and simulation of biological system. What is modeling? Modeling is basically constructing a simplified or idealized description of a system or process, often in mathematical terms, uh, devised to produce, uh, uh, to do calculations and predictions. So uh, what I mean by modeling is that, suppose if you have a glass of uh, water here, I mean, just it's a very schematic presentation of that thing. So you want to know, so, uh, the model, the water molecules that is there actually, that is there in inside the glass. I mean, that is called modeling. I hope if there are chemistry students there, there will be, uh, they will be already familiar with the ball and stick model of uh, various uh, small molecules and also as well as big molecules. So this is called modeling and simulation refers to solving the mathematical equation. As I have told you that the mathematical Equations are used to describe the system or the object. I mean, modeling and simulation, the purpose is to describe nature in mathematical terms. I mean, you know, I mean, nature is so much complicated, even, I mean, as well as the nat nat natural processes. So the aim of this modeling and simulation is that to describe uh, the natural processes and also to simulate these natural processes. Now, what is computer simulation provide? You already have uh, applied uh, so many, I think, experimental methods. So what is that computer simulation provide? Computer simulation is basically a computational microscope. That means it will give you a window to look beyond what is not available from other methods. Now, computer simulation provide crucial insights beyond that achievable from experimental results. I mean, that experimental produces a lot of data that you will get actually uh, often from uh, biological experiment. But in many times, you will uh, you will search for this uh, molecular detail actually, which may not be uh, or is difficult to available from the experiment. And secondly, computer simulation replace difficult or non-achievable experiment which is, uh, I mean, you cannot design, I mean, supposed to study a biological system, you need to design an experiment, which is very diff difficult to do in a lab. So that's in computers, in computer simulation, we have that advantage that you can design or model the system in computer and then manipulate it according to your need. And the uh, important goal of this computer simulation is that you can predict new phenomena, which can be tested experimentally. Now, this computer simulation is a, I mean, is very general in the sense that it's applicable to, I mean, uh, any kind of a material, material system. I mean, it can be of various kind of computer simulations are there. I mean, to various kind of uh, objects. So here we mainly are concerned with biological system. 
as the title suggests that we will st uh, study that multi scale modeling and simulation of biological system like so i mean biological system is and sometimes we call it a, i mean it's a macro molecule so these terms are in i, I will uh, use it interchangeably so uh, please don't get confused actually so it's a big system large system that we are trying to understand by modeling and simulating biological system and phenomena occur over a wide range of length and time scales you already know i think that you know the length scale can vary from a uh, hundred of an angstrom to a ten of angstrom and the time scale can vary from uh, sub picosecond to seconds and even longer now it's essential to model and simulate this complex chemical system that is the biological system in different resolutions of time and length that is at multi scale and here comes the term multi scale multi scale simulation methods truly capture the intricate interplay of intermolecular interaction in the complex system these biological systems are very complex you know contains thousands lakhs of atoms so they interact among themselves so to describe their interaction their physics how they are talking to each other is very difficult and multi scale simulation method truly capture those complicated interaction now here i have shown a graph you see i mean this is a uh, schematic here i have plotted from femtosecond time scale to millisecond and from the in the length side system side from uh, angstrom to the micrometer so as i have already told that the biological system or phenomena range i mean this motion occur over a long range of uh, length scale that is uh, you know from uh, few angstrom to micrometer as well as uh, i mean or even larger uh, and in time scale it's uh, varies from you know uh, sub picosecond to uh, seconds and even longer so you have seen that uh, you can see from here is that that for small molecule that is you know for water or like uh, for your paracetamol that you take uh, uh, as a medicine you can model the small molecule via qm that is the quantum mechanics as the system size increases you can for a protein globular protein you can do all atom md all atom md mean molecular dynamics and as the system sizes increases you have to uh, resort to some uh, coarse gain method and eventually a continuum model so the key to simulating the system is that if you see the system sizes increases from very small to very big so the key to simulating complex system is that uh, multi scale model now here is a slide that you can see you already know if you see closely these are the available simulation and experimental methods uh, that can access the listed length and time scale that is there in this uh, left side uh, scale if you see that you know you already i think have applied or uh, are doing that x-ray crystallography magnetic resonance that is nmr or cryo electron microscopy and in the time scale you already do uh, various kind of spectroscopy as well as other experimental methods so here is that length scale if you see that from the nanometer i mean from the angstrom level to the micrometer level all the available theoretical or computational as well as the experimental methods and here it is listed the time scale from femtosecond to second you see all this you know below is the experimentally available methods and the above are the simulation that is the computational method to study your system now here i have shown the computer simulation method that is one is classical molecular dynamics method that we are going to study today and the quantum mechanical methods and the other hybrid quantum mechanics molecular methods coarse gain method monte carlo method so uh, some of the rest of the method we will study in the let later classes but one thing we have to understand that the choice of methods that whether you will apply a classical molecular dynamics method or a quantum mechanical methods or a hybrid method like a qmm depends on the question you want to ask because you know every problem uh, uh, warrants a different kind of a method that that 
uh, suitable to its uh, complexity. So you have to judiciously choose the method to study your system. That is primarily here is the biological system. Now, here coming. So before I go to any particular method in detail, I'm just trying to give you here the flavor of computer simulation methods. I mean, what computer simulation is about or what molecular dynamics is about. I mean, to get a feel, it's 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 better that you get a feel of the computer simulation method uh, before we go uh, into the details of the theory of this method. So as I have shown, I think in the first slide or so that a glass of water. Now, suppose if you apply a computational microscope here, I mean, to see what the water molecules are doing. And here you see in the left side that all are in constant motion. This is a 100 picosecond simulation of water just to show, I mean, how the water molecules that you cannot observe with your naked eye is doing inside your glass of water. So that is called the simulating. So you are simulating the glass of water is a real system, but you cannot see obviously the molecules, uh, uh, the water molecules, but where you apply the computational microscope or your computer simulation method, then you can see that if you if you if you deep uh, digger actually you see that what they are doing these are water molecules represented if you see this one the red one is the oxygen atom connected by two hydrogen atoms so those two hydrogen atoms are uh, uh, represented by the white balls and the oxygen atom is red ball so you see that they are in constant motion colliding with each other and then uh, repelling each other so in computer simulation method or molecular dynamic method, what we do, if we know the position, velocity and interaction among the atoms, like here is a collection of water molecules that is consist of three atoms, hydrogen and uh, two hydrogens and oxygen. So the future can be predicted. Now coming to the biological system, you see that we will uh, see later uh, in more detail. Here I have shown how it will look like actually when you try to uh, simulate a biological system. This is the green, this green uh, thing is the a, a kinase, SRS, uh, SRC kinase protein and the it is surrounded by the water molecules. Again, you see that it's a very, the red is the oxygen part, the uh, hydrogens are depicted as the white thing and the purple sphere are uh, the potassium ion and the chloride ions are represented as orange sphere. So this is a simulation system consists of 50,000 atoms. Now what we are trying to do, you know, biomolecules doesn't, I mean, function in vacuum. That is correct. I mean, it is inside our body. So the, they need some kind of an environment and mostly aqueous environment. So that's why what we are trying when we try to model a biological system, it should be, it should be made, the model should be as close as possible to the real system. Exactly, it is not possible, but one should try to go to the, uh, uh, as much as close to the real system to model a biological system. So coming to the next slide, I mean, again, what molecular dynamic simulation can give it? It can give you the native structure from a, uh, protein sequence. I mean, this is a uh, example that was done uh, in 2005. So this is basically a three bundle helix protein. I mean, that is uh, the molecular dynamics started from two different trajectories and they are ending in a native structure. Native structure is this one. So these are the snapshot taken at different time frame. So I mean, what eventually it's doing, I mean, following the interaction among the atoms, this protein sequence, this straight chain, I mean, or like that unfolded structure uh, after undergoing several uh, transition, conformational and transformation, it's arriving at the uh, native state. So that's the protein folding actually can be simulated, the phenomena can be simulated by molecular dynamics method. Now, why do we do modeling and simulation? Modeling and simulation provide a molecular level picture of structure and dynamics of biological system. Macroscopic properties are often determined by the molecular structure. That is, you can study the structure property relationship utilizing these methods. And experiments often do not provide molecular level or atomistic detail. I mean, nowadays, bi biology has become more uh, 
I mean, uh, had been, uh, is studying, I mean, being studied molecular at the molecular level. So experiments generally in most of the cases often do not provide the molecular level or atomistic details, the atomistic view, which is available from computer simulation. So quantitative and qualitative properties can be obtained from simulation of the system at the atomistic level. And most importantly, what computer simulation can do, it can produce uh, hypothesis is which can be tested experimentally. So that means by designing a molecular dynamics or computer simulation of a system, you can predict something. Now, just these are some general concept about the classical molecular dynamics simulation. In mo classical molecular dynamics simulation, we use molecular mechanical force, for force field where each atom is represented as ball, you see, and these are connected by spring. So then we get the molecular dynamics by solving Newton's equation of, of motion. Forces are often from potential energy. So each of these part I will be describing in a more detail in the next slide. So what molecular dynamics is doing? Suppose there is a ball or like that at this position. So after a certain time, by utilizing molecular dynamics, you know where the ball is heading to. And here is the representation of the biomolecule as a collection of balls connected by string. Now, the problem with classical molecular dynamics is that it cannot describe bond breaking and bond making processes uh, with electron reorganization. For that, you need quantum mechanical or electron structured method. So for this uh, purpose, a hybrid quantum mechanics and molecular mechanics method that is QMM has been devised. So in this case, what we do, suppose this is the biomolecule. So here in a small portion of the region where the bond breaking or bond breaking or the electron uh, transfer, all this thing happening that is described by this QM level and the rest of the uh, molecule that biomolecule is described by the molecular and mechanical force field. So we get two answers. From QM, we get what the electrons are doing. From molecular mechanics, we get what the atoms are doing. Now, for de developing this multi scale model, uh, uh, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2013 was awarded to Martin Karplas, Michael Levitt, and Aria Warshall. I mean, I mean, they have developed all this. They are the discoverer of. Uh, uh, pioneered the methods of molecular dynamics, QMM method, as well as quant, uh, codes gain method. Now I'm coming, so far I have discussed actually what molecular uh, simulation is uh, all about. I mean, what is, I mean, how, how, uh, what does it do, why it is useful, and how does it look like, I mean, uh, to get a feel actually. We will try to uh, come to a real example in the uh, uh, in the later classes. So here we will describe the first one that is the simpler approximation that is the classical molecular dynamic simulation method. So what is the theory behind it? Now, as I have already told you that the macromolecules are described as a collection of balls connected by springs while interacting through non nearest neighbors through charge charge Coulomb interaction and short range repulsion. Now, an important point to uh, note is that classical MD simulation cannot describe bond breaking and bond making process in, in any biological system. So for that, we, we need a very special method that is the hybrid QMM method. So in this picture, suppose this is a part of the biomolecule. I have shown that these are the uh, uh, balls actually connected by this spring. So if you see that these bonds actually can uh, can vibrate, actually it can it can stretch, it can contract like that, and as well as the angle also here in this picture. So also there will be a non-bonding interaction between these two white atoms here, and also it can undergo a torsional rotation. Now. This is the major approximation. This is a simple approximation that the biomolecules are represented as a collection of balls with charges connected by springs. Now, with this assumption, we will see how the molecular dynamics, how the molecules, I mean, the molecules are constant in motion. So how this motion and uh, how, the, how their trajectory is generated. So how molecular dynamics is generated. So this is the basic equation, Newton's equation of motion. 
we will apply this equation to get the molecular dynamics of this uh, collection of atoms. So here we need an energy function. Uh, in the next uh, slide, we will describe this in detail. So this is used to determine force on each atom. Now the basic equation which we'll use is that F equal to MA. I hope uh, you all have uh, read actually this equation in your high school uh, level. That is the force equal to mass into acceleration. So this is needed actually. You know the uh, atoms of the biological systems are all in constant motion. So if you want to move one atom uh, to another position, you have to apply some force. And the force will be obtained from uh, this equation force equal to mass into acceleration. Now, how do we drive this equation and what is an energy function? We will see in the next slide. So how molecular dynamics trajectory is generated? So in MD simulation, what we do basically, we simply solve the classic equation of motion, expressing the changes in coordinates and velocities at a time increment del T by this one. Now, what we have, we have initial position from where you will get the initial position of the atom from PDB structure, from NMR structure, from other sources, from homology modicle, you can get actually, you will know the coordinates actually, already Cartesian coordinate, you have seen all many uh, PDB files of uh, biological molecules or assemblies. So you will get the initial position from that source. And then you have to get initial velocity. That's the velocity at time G, uh, zero actually. So how do we get that velocity? We will uh, use the Maxwell distribution of speed and we'll take random velocity for each atom of the system. Now what we do basically, once we get the initial position and initial velocity of the atoms of that biomolecule, we will try to determine the next position. I mean, after a certain time interval, that is the del T, time interval is del T, where the atoms will be in the uh, in the configurational space. So here is this equation, uh, Ri uh, uh, at T plus del T time, where it lead to. So what is important to note is that, you know, to evaluate this next position and velocity of the atoms, collection of atoms, you need this factor. That is the del U by del Ri. This is nothing but this is the negative of this one potential energy derivative with respect to the coordinate uh, uh, vector is nothing but the force. And this is the force. And the force equal to minus, uh, minus del U by del Ri. Now I here, the subscript actually sometimes is confusing. This I represent to the each atom actually. I mean, there are so many atoms. So for one atom, we are representing this equation and you see that this is the Newton's law. This is we are using, I mean, to get the forces on each atom to move them from one place to another. So F equal to, you, you will get this one and then the other factors you can obviously obtain. It's uh, quite simple. Now we will make uh, we will make use of a force field. So that is called a force field. This one, this uh, uh, this uh, this this one, this figure, this uh, del u by del r. This term is called a force field. Now what is a force field? As I have already told you that the approximation behind biomolecules is that biomolecules are described by charge points, that is balls, yes, with partial charges connected by spring. Now the force field refers to the functional form and parameter sets that are used to describe the uh, describe the the uh, the uh, macromolecule as a function of its atomic coordinate. Now in molecular dynamics, I mean every time you will you try to do a molecular dynamics, you will come across that which force will you use, I mean which will be suitable for your molecule. Now what it does, a force will describe the time evolution of bond lengths, bond angle, torsions, and non-bonding van der Waals and electrostatic interaction between atoms actually, how they will move, how they will ever evolve in time actually. So that is the function of a force field. Now the time dependent coordinate vector RT describes the position of each atom at the time T and is known as a classical trajectory. So now 
we will come to the specific the functional form of the force field how does it look like here in this slide i have shown you that the force field calculation so this is the potential energy function this is a summation of this uh, potential energy from bonds lengths from angles from dihedral angles and from non-bonded atoms and the bond and angle terms have this specific uh, functional form that is you see that is this uh, functional form are quadratic in, in nature this uh, the bond angles if you see i mean in this picture actually this bond stretching is represented by this potential here below actually this is a deep well potential even the angle also uh, bending is represented by this kind of it the shape of the potential is quite similar and the torsion around this bond is represented by this kind of a potential so these are the mathematical term in the force field that will describe that how your bonds will vibrate i mean i mean how what will be the forces and what will be the uh, uh, angle uh, forces diagonal angle forces and then coming to the non-bonded energy function you see all uh, in the previous slide we have described thus the bonded lengths i mean bonded atom that is the bond lengths and the bond angle now there are uh, non-bonding interaction if you see the picture here if you see this this is the non-bonded interaction so here there are two parts in the non-bonded thing one is the van der Waals interaction that is given by this functional form and then there is the coulomb that is the electrostatic interaction that is uh, given by the uh, coulomb's law so that is i hope that is uh, uh, familiar to you now i mean there can be more terms in the uh, force field actually so the more terms are there in means i mean this is what i have shown is the uh, is the general form i mean uh, uh, many people can add i mean the induced uh, interaction as well as uh, some other cross term so these are the main terms that bond contribution angle contribution the electrostatic contribution and the van der waals interaction so this is uh, how a force field uh, how a force field looks like now coming to md simulation using the force field uh, there are some practical aspects in a biological system with many degrees of freedom, we expect to find a very large number of local minima. Now, it is not clear in an efficient way to find the lowest minima. I mean, they are a huge system containing, you know, sometimes thousands of atoms or lots of atoms. So it's very difficult to get a lowest, the lowest minimum structure because often the conformation of this biological molecule are separated very by very uh, low energy barrier so the suggestion practical suggestion is that we need to use much more computer power time and different types of search procedure that is molecular dynamics or monte carlo so already we are studying molecular dynamics monte carlo will come later so generating different configuration so as much as conformation you can generate the more is the better and minimizing at different regions of conformation space of the given molecule. So what is mean by that? Here is a very schematic presentation. The, uh, the biomolecules moves generally on a energy landscape. Now energy landscape are multidimensional. Here what I have shown you is a very simplified picture uh, of the energy landscape where there are two only coordinate system. Here in this case is the potential energy and here is the conformation space now suppose this is a, a, our biomolecule so it can go to here and it can then go there it can go here as well as it can so these are various regions of the energy lands landscape which is very complicated and multi-dimensional so you know the molecular dynamics what it does is that the biomolecule that is represented by this uh, blue uh, Scared. So what it does, it explores different regions. Suppose these, these, these of the conformational energy landscape. So that's why now, if you see that uh, the this uh, uh, the minimum structures are separated by very low energy barrier. So you know, uh, I mean, it's very difficult to get a global minima which will be the lowest in energy because. Uh, once it is trapped inside a, a energy minimum, sometimes it's not uh, 
uh, easy to get over the barrier and go to the other region. Now, uh, the interesting thing, I have put a question mark here that we will describe in the probably in the last lecture that whether this biomolecule can overcome this barrier to get, go here. So that is another question. So that is important because you, the biomolecules need to go visit all the places of the configuration space. So whether is it possible that we'll describe in the uh, last lecture probably. Now, coming to the another important thing that is the time step in MD simulation, you have to decide on a time step in MD simulation. Time step mean, I mean, how you have to choose the interval after which the Newton's equations uh, of motion will be solved. Now, here I have shown it here various biological motions or I mean, in general also it is true. This is bond stretching which occurs in the femtosecond, 10 femtosecond or so. Then the rotations or surface side change that is occurs in the picosecond level. Then the rotation of the buried side change which occurs in the uh, like in the 10 to the minus 4 second to 1 second. And the allosteric transition can happen in the microsecond time region. So you see the range of time scale are so varied. So what is the time set that one should take? Now here is the prescription directly from the uh, uh, person who uh, who discovered and pioneered this method. So MD simulation is limited by highest frequency vibration. The quantity del D that is the time interval must be very small so that the potential energy does not change too much during each time step. What does it mean is that if the time step is too small, then what will happen? It will take a longer time, extraordinary longer time to reach to a you know meaningful structure. And if the time step is larger, then what will happen? Then 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 suddenly the structure may collapse because it will not uh, get enough time to uh, calculate all the forces properly. Now a CH bond vibrates with a repeat period of 10 femtosecond. So the suggestion is that a satisfactory time state would be one femtosecond because your bond stretching, you know, all the biomolecules will uh, have this kind of a bond stretching uh, vibration. So generally a satisfactory time step would be one femtosecond. Now, I mean, it also limits the, uh, the, the time of uh, the time scale of your molecular dynamic simulation so that I mean it, it decide actually whether you can go to nanosecond microsecond or nowadays even to millisecond nanomolecular dynamic simulation in a species in very special cases you would be allowed to take and that should be based on a very careful judgment to take a longer relatively longer time step but in generally it should be uh, like uh, one femtosecond. So now coming to another point of molecular dynamics simulation, that is the periodic boundary condition. So what is mean by that? So we are simulating a finite system. I mean, suppose you uh, take the example of a glass of water. So how many molecules are there in a one liter of glass of water? Suppose it is it will be uh, of the order of 10 to the 25 or more. I mean, it's not exact, but the order will be around that actually 10 to the power 25 you just imagine and in our simulation how many atoms will be there hardly uh, maybe thousands or lakhs like that but it is not uh, it is nothing compared to uh, 10 to the power 25 or 26 right so i mean because of the finite size of the system simulation system there will be a boundary effects which is a problematic so periodic boundary con conditions enable a simulation to be performed with a relatively small number of particles so as to avoid problems with boundary effects caused by the finite size now what is that means by that that suppose this shaded region is the actual simulation box and this is your particle or biomolecule or whatever so the shaded box represent the system we are simulating this one and the rest of the boxes are exact copies exact images in every detail suppose here is a uh, suppose molecule or uh, particle actually in general so at this position with a particular velocity so what happened in the other box in the neighboring boxes there will be a similar kind of a particle at that position with a similar kind of a velocity so that if the 
uh, this particle or molecule leaves uh, the simulation box during uh, the simulation, then an equal pa equivalent particle will enter from the opposite uh, opposite uh, end. I mean, countering the boundary effects. Now, coming to that, now so far we have discussed actually uh, how do we simulate a biomolecule. That is, you have to understand these biomolecules are consist of atoms and they interact among themselves via various kind of uh, interatomic uh, interactions. So, once you able to form the, you, you, you solve, you, you get the force field, you solve the Newton's equation of motion, then another fu function comes into play is that, uh, that how do you relate those values I mean, how do you relate those molecular simulation data to the actual experimental data? So here comes the uh, 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 concept of uh, statistical mechanics because it is the branch. Uh, it's it it provides a means actually to bridge the connection between the microscopic entities of a system and uh, observable uh, macroscopic observable like temperature, pressure, and all those things. So. The average of a given property is given by this equation. So here actually, I mean, uh, I haven't given much detail. You can definitely refer to uh, a good statistical thermodynamics books, uh, whoever are interested. So here KB is the Boltzmann constant and T is the absolute uh, temperature and DR is the volume element of the complete space. Now to get a average property, what is expected is that I mean, it requires us to explore all the points in the entire configuration space of the system and which is not possible practically. So that is the thing we have to understand. So how do we measure, how do we get the experimental uh, value checked against the simulation data? I mean, how do you connect your molecular dynamic simulation to a uh, experimental observable property? So the evaluation of statistical mechanical averages implies that the system included in the simulation is a part of a larger system that is called ensemble. And now the concept of ensemble is very important in molecular dynamics as well as in the statistical mechanics thing. So whose atoms are not, uh, 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 whose no, uh, atoms are not, uh, uh, count, uh, I mean, represented in an explicit way. And I will come to the ensemble picture, actually, what does it mean, actually, in the in the next slide. So, I mean, it's a very important concept that is used to derive experimental uh, properties. And what we use that since we have told already that, I mean, it's uh, virtually impossible to explore all the regions of a energy landscape. Your molecule, suppose if you see here, your molecules is going from here to there, like here and then here, and it might overcome also in some cases to that. But you see, you know, as I have told you, this is a very simplified energy landscape. And in actual reality, the energy landscape are multidimensional and with much complexity. So, you know, there will be vast region to for uh, ex for exploration for for the system and that is not possible to visit all the points in the space space or configuration space so how do we get the experimental property so here is a hypothesis that is ergodic hypothesis which is which states that that the time average uh, over a long time uh, long time is equal to the configuration average so that is given by this one this uh, ensemble uh, 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 average is equal to the time average. Now, the desired average is simply obtained by a time average of the given property. So, how do we get this? I mean, what is ensemble? I have already introduced that the evaluation of statistical mechanical averages implies that the system included in the simulation is part of a much larger system. I mean, we will have a, we will model an actual simulation box, which contains our biological system, 
what are you know counter anons all this thing now that will be part of a much larger system that is called ensemble now whose atoms are not considered in explicit way now here is a real picture of an ensemble these are experimental structure now of the protein kinases now this protein kinases uh, there are uh, various pdbs obtained for this protein kinase and then superimposed one above the another and you can see there also is the same protein kinases i mean these data are superimposed the structure is superimposed from the nmr data uh, one above the another so these are what are called experimental ensemble what you measure when you measure a property that is nothing but the average of the property of many many particles so ensembles are a better reference to reproduce experimental result that we will we are using in the uh, molecular dynamics or computer simulation method as experiment measure average of properties over a real ensemble i mean that's why if you want to correlate your simulation data or molecular uh, dynamics data you have to perform the molecular dynamics by selecting a suitable ensemble for your system so there are uh, different types of ensemble available that is uh, i mean these are the system parameter n is the total number of particle in the system v is the volume e is total energy of the system and t is the absolute temperature and p is the system pressure and mu is the chemical potential now here are different types of you see here the uh, ensemble available so based on your requirement uh, you can choose one ensemble to carry out your simulation like uh, micro canonical ensemble they are this n v e will be constant and canonical ensemble there the volume and temperature will be constant and now most of the experiment actually are carried out under this constant pressure and temperature condition so this isothermal isobaric ensemble would be a good choice for your uh, molecular simulation of your uh, biological system and then there are uh, grand canonical uh, ensemble that is uh, where chemical potential mu volume and temperature uh, remains the constant so you have to choose actually uh, an ensemble for uh, Uh, simulating your biological system so that when you get the property you can correlate your uh, simulation uh, data with your experimentally uh, measured data now comes i mean this i will not going to detail we will be mainly confined to a uh, molecular dynamics method and then we will be uh, going to quantum mechanical method and eventually we'll go to the multi scale method that is multi scale method means that combination of a uh, different kind of methods that is suppose uh, a quantum mechanical method in combination with a mo molecular mechanical classical method so this type of method would be our main aim so but you know the basic thing about monte carlo simulation is that it generates a uh, configurations of a uh, of a of a system by making random changes to the positions of the species present together with their orientation and conformations where appropriate so what does it do suppose you have a biological molecule now it just uh, uh, make the random changes to the uh, position of the atoms or whatever uh, particles are there and then the new a new configuration is generated so whether the new configuration is will be accepted or not is depends upon some a boltzmann uh, uh, weightage actually so that's how this monte carlo simulation methods uh, is uh, is based on so i'm not going to into detail about that we will be mainly concerned about the classical molecular dynamics method now next we will go to the quantum mechanical methods and eventually will uh, have the multi scale method that is the uh, title of our uh, talk so yeah so these are the references uh, you can uh, read this book this is the molecular model modeling by uh, leach uh, this is a good book and also if you want a more detailed understanding uh, for the uh, frankel and smith book understanding molecular simulation from algorithms to 
application and also i mean there are some good review actually i have cited in the presentation so you can uh, also go through this thing so today what we have done so far have got the basic theory i mean not in detail obviously just the basic thing that okay you have a collection of atoms that is uh, that is the biomolecule so how do you generate more configuration of your biological system that is how do you generate the trajectory i mean how does your molecule will evolve in time so we try to understand the underlying theories i mean in basic form not in very detail that how uh, how how the forces are calculated how the interaction potential that is the potential energies uh, functions are represented and how then uh, the important thing about the time state how many time interval you you need to take in a molecular dynamic simulation also the ensemble concept that why it is uh, necessary to use an ensemble actually to get uh, your simulation data to be i mean to be uh, comparable to your experimental observable so this thing so next classes uh, we will go i mean uh, to understand try to understand I, how these molecular dynamics uh, are done at, uh, using a maybe a real example actually and then we will go obviously to advanced simulation technique that is the i mean uh, what advanced uh, method like coarse gain hybrid free enhanced free energy calculation are available in this computer simulation uh, methods so today i will stop here and uh, this is time for your question thank you So I hope uh, everyone can hear me and I'll be happy to any questions or comments or uh, you have anything to ask me in this regard what uh, have been uh, said today. Okay, I have got some questions. So, uh, if you have any more, actually, I would uh, be happy to. Okay, so to answer the question that is uh, uh, asked actually in the chat box, that is. Uh, how do we determine the initial velocity? So once you get the structure, I mean, of a bio, uh, protein, suppose uh, protein from the uh, PDB data bank, you will have all the Cartesian called coordinate of, of the atoms of uh, that uh, protein. Now you do not have any velocity there. So how do we determine that? So this is generally guessed. Guessed means it is assumed from a Maxwell distribution function. So, I mean, if you just go back to your physical chemistry textbook, you can check that there is a Maxwell distribution of velocities. So, uh, it will give you uh, the velocities uh, uh, following that equation. That equation I have not shown anywhere. So, you can uh, definitely read it in the physical chemistry textbook. And from the Maxwell distribution equation, uh, Maxwell distribution of velocities, you will get the velocities, initial velocities of the atoms. And once you get the initial position is already, you get from the Cartesian coordinate in the PDB data bank and the velocities from the Maxwell distribution 
uh, uh, equation. So then it will be automatically, you know, iter iteratively calculated. So that is answer to your question. Okay, so there is another question, how to select a molecule, either PDB or NMR structure for simulation. Obviously, the first thing actually you will check uh, that if the PDB structure is available and you need to check the resolution data at what resolution the structure is determined. If it is at a good uh, resolution, then I mean, you can start with that. But many times what happens actually, you may not uh, get the crystal structure that is the x-ray crystal structure of your biomolecule or biological system or protein from the PDB data bank. Then you need to go to uh, the NMR data, whether the, there is the NMR uh, structure available, available for that molecule or not. And the I, I would uh, extend your question a little more. Suppose you do not have the structure available of that molecule, the molecule is not crystallizable as well as the molecular, I mean, you do not get the structure from the NMR. So what then, what do you do then? I mean, that is, you will face many often, I guess. So then what you have to do, you have to find a similar kind of a protein based on your homology sequences. So that, I mean, it will have a certain sequence similarity with your, that uh, non-available crystal structure protein. So what you have to do, you have to apply homology modeling. So you have to build that protein by using some homology modeling of a, another uh, uh, known protein with a high sequence similarity. So that is the uh, 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 answer to your question. So there is another question. Let me uh, read it. Can ensemble be a different protein for which MD has to be done? No. Uh, yeah. So the ensemble concept is that like uh, it is like that one. Your protein is there. Now your protein, what you get from the crystal structure is one static view, right? And in actual, in reality, what is that protein is doing? The protein in already all the time, it's uh, in motion actually. So it's in dynamic uh, entity. It's not a static entity, which you are getting from your X-ray structure. So that means that you have to uh, uh, generate. I mean, so there are various conformation of a single protein, but what you are getting from X-ray is a, it's not uh, is a static structure, only one snapshot, and it's uh, mostly an average snapshot. So you are not getting the all the other confirmation that a protein can have. So the ensemble concept is for that one. So the ensemble concept will be applicable to your biological system that you are planning for uh, uh, planning for a MD simulation. Okay, no, you cannot add as you have asked if I have understood correctly that can ensemble be a different protein for which MD has to be done? No. For a single protein, for a protein kinase, for example, so you model the system and then you decide on the ensemble. Suppose it is a, a, a canonical ensemble or it's a NPT, that is a isobaric isothermal ensemble. So you have to carry out the molecular dynamic simulation of protein kinase for utilizing this one ensemble, either canonical or you can then choose your isobaric uh, isothermal ensemble like that. So for a particular system, and then you have to choose the ensemble. So for each system, and you can choose uh, uh, any ensemble based on your requirement.
any other questions i mean people who are trying to do any kind of a computer simulation method uh, simulations like uh, md simulation or molecular dynamic simulation or you know if some uh, someone is planning to do some other kind of a simulation like uh, hybrid simulation or anything you need any uh, clarification like uh, why the time set is time set is like a one femtosecond or how or what ensemble you have to choose or i mean these are practical aspect and how long i mean there, there is another question also how long amd simulation should be run like this kind of anything you can ask actually so there are two more classes and hopefully i mean today there are some were some disturbance unfortunately at the beginning so next time hopefully it will be smooth So you have to be careful about the force field also, because there is uh, various kind of force field available. I mean, uh, you might have already heard about the charm force field or amber force field or OPLS force field. So uh, when you study a particular uh, biological molecule, just be make sure that okay you apply the same force field for uh, all for uh, all your study of the biological molecule don't change it actually because you know this force field i have shown what i have shown in the slide are the general form now there are finer details actually incorporated in all those force fields so just make sure you use one particular type of force field for your study so that the study will be consistent throughout Okay, sir. No questions. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, shall I disconnect? Uh, okay, sir. I will end the lecture. Yeah. Please.